Today on Real Life, reaching Cuba with the gospel and baseball. Jeff Siegel of Global Baseball shares how to get involved with the mission. Also, what's the best way to impart biblical teaching to our children? Rabbi and Susan Lappin share their ancient Hebrew wisdom on Ask the Rabbi. And on Real Life Coaching, Super Bowl champion Clint Gresham begins his series on the four pillars of wholeness. That's today on Real Life. This is Real Life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, he empowers you. And the Bible is your and my guide to abundant life. I'm your host, Don Black, with my beautiful co-host, Terry, and our co-host, Pastor Amy Schaefer, here on a Monday. Monday. Bring it on. Monday. Monday. As we start this week in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. That's right. Here, I thought you were going to say, and it's springtime coming. Well, I wish I could say that. Yes. But did you look at the, the, the weather forecast? No. It's It's got a little stuff coming little this weekend towards us. Storm, maybe? Maybe <laughs> something, something, something. We've got so much packed into this program. I'm so glad you've joined us. Welcome. We welcome all of our family. We welcome all of you who may have just found this program, maybe found us accidentally. But you know, Pastor Amy, there is no accidents in God's world. No way. Are you kidding? He knew, he knew before you were even born that today you were going to turn on the TV and you were going to watch real life and you were going to hear good news and you're going to be inspired and full of hope and peace and joy. That's right, and you were going to see the co-co-host and the co-host and the host. Well, here we go. Here we are. Well, let's let's rev up our engines and let's get into the into the program. We have some phenomenal guests still ahead of us, but first, I want to talk about some things that Terry and I did. First of all, we just got back from from going to Puerto Rico. That's right. We just Puerto got Rico. back. That's right. Very amazing. It's a beautiful country, but you know, one of the big things I took away from it all. They still need our help. It is yeah. really in still a bad way. People still don't have power. I just couldn't don't. believe that. It How just can you mine. live without power? Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's a know. big deal. It's like camping. We've got a, we, we have a, we have some video to show you in a few days. We can't show you those right now. So rather than getting too deeply into the Puerto Rican, which God met us there in supernatural ways, we want to share that with you on video in just a few in just a few days. So stay tuned as we go through the week. But we have some pictures as we Yay. go out and about. There's some pictures we're going to do some okay. shout outs. That's right. So let's look at some of these pictures. And Terry, you're going to have They're to help me. They're not in Puerto Rico, by these the way. These are not Puerto no. Rico pictures. There we go. That yeah. is at NRB where Cornerstone was named Station uh, Network or Station of the Year from Love Worth Findings Yay. Team. So that's yours truly getting the award all to our team, all yeah. to, the, to, to the ministry here right, at Cornerstone. Right. So we're, mm -hmm. we uh, receive that humbly and we thank mm -hmm. uh, Love Worth Finding. There, Terry, who, who are we talking to? Okay, we're talking to the Millers. That's Pamela and Sarah Miller and Evan Kramer. They, they were um, doing a shout out to us. Uh, we're doing a shout out to them. Yes, yeah, good to meet watch, you guys. And they just love Jesus. Isn't that Aww. exciting? That's exciting. I love yeah. to see that. Mm -hmm. And there's Mitzi. Hey, Mitzi. Mitzi watches every day from Pastor Gary's church over oh. in um, Johnstown, Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Right. So, oh, Mitzi, nice. we, we, it was great to meet you, and it was great to be with Pastor Gary, and <laughs> there we are. We were there for his 50th anniversary of ministry, uh, oh, Pastor yeah. Amy. Yeah. And there's Pastor Gary, his wife, Terry, and myself. Uh, a selfie. What a sweat. <laughs> Not good at selfies. I don't do now. Amy, on the other oh, yeah. hand, selfie queen. The Not queen that I'm good at it, but selfies. no, you are good. You're she knows good. how to just do it just right, where it all looks just right and, and looks real good. But but well, you just teach us. You have to show something. I just had somebody at church yesterday. They said I've got this family in Johnstown, and I need a good church for them. And I'm like, I know we know somebody there. I'll find out. So I just found out. How Yay. cool is God? It is a fantastic He's into church. the details. Mm -hmm. Fantastic church. Okay, for all of you that are uh, participating with us in our 21 days of prayer and fasting, I encourage you. Now today's day 11, so you get your book out. If you haven't got your book, go online and download it. You can get it for free. If you do, if you want to get a hard copy, call the number on the screen, and we will be glad to send you a copy. We're on day 11, 
And today we're talking about the, the principle of tongues and interpretation. I go through the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. And so Amy and this and Terry and this day, we're focusing on the power of praying in the Spirit mm -hmm. and interpretation, which is often misunderstood. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very often mm -hmm. misunderstood. Yeah, right. In fact, tongues, tongues the the, the the message of tongues, when you talk about the, the theology of tongues, is one of the bigger dividers in the church. Yes, that's right. It divides a lot of people, and that's a shame. It really is a shame. Right. Because it's God's gifts it's to gift. us. Right. Mm -hmm. Why should we be fighting about a gift from yeah, God? Right. Let's not fight about it anymore. Let's, right. My attitude is let's have every gift that God wants to give us mm -hmm. and then receive them with great joy mm -hmm. and, gra and great, and great uh, anticipation. Because they're for a reason, Terry. They are, and they're for our good. You know, it's sort of a, a sad commentary when we don't want a gift that's supposed to bless us because we're just sort of uncertain about it. Right. How about we just hunger for God yeah. and all that He has for us? You know, my, my mother-in-law grew up in the Catholic Church and she she was teaching CCD, is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. Class, and she just got hungry for God and was praying and spending time with Him and she got filled with the Spirit on her own, wow. praying and talking to God. And then she goes and asks the, the priest and, and therefore, uh, led her journey, um, See? her faith her journey. Faith journey. Yes. So mm -hmm. God, just hunger for God. That's right. God comes to us in multiple ways. So we want to mm -hmm. encourage you to continue with us in the 21 days and, and to join us in the fasting. Here's what we're praying for. We're praying for our families. Mm -hmm. We're praying for our nation and we're asking God's blessing and protection on the nation of Israel. Those are our three main areas of prayer. So if you can stand with us in those areas and get the guide, it's a, it's a, it's a, a 21 day process, takes us all the way to Good Friday. And then on Good Friday, we're going to celebrate the Passover. We're going to celebrate Jesus' uh, death and resurrection on, on Resurrection Weekend. So we'll give it to you for free. Call the number on the screen or go online and download it. Just get it right now when you go online and download it. And uh, we just pray, that, I pray it's a blessing to you. Amy, what's coming up next? Today on Ask the Rabbi, the Lappins respond to a question about the best ways to teach your children the Bible. Let's take a look. Thanks for being with us here on Ask the Rabbi. Uh, Susan and I love using the principles of ancient Jewish wisdom uh, to teach God's wishes in our relationships with Him, with our families, with our friends, and even relationships with our money. And uh, we do that by working on the questions that you send to us. Listen to this one. As a recent father, it is my desire to show my child the way of the Lord. Thus, I have a question. What is the best way to teach Torah to our children, especially to toddlers under the age of 12 years? Toddlers under the age of 12? Okay, fine. What is the best method and what are the best techniques to convey the narrative to them while at the same time conveying the wisdom and the substance, which some stories uh, I find may not be suitable for children? I want to learn from your perspective as a rabbi and as Jewish parents on how to impart your wisdom to your children. And this is from Nugroho. Um, Nugro, thank you very much indeed for your question. And uh, the, the, the first thing I'm going to uh, take issue with in your question because uh, it needs a correction right there. You said that some of the stories in the Bible are not suitable for your children. And, and I would say that that isn't true. I can't think of a single story that isn't suitable to your, for your children. You might be thinking in the book of Genesis when Judah visited uh, with a woman by the wayside whom he thought to be one kind of a woman. In reality, it was his daughter-in-law who was uh, disguised. And a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that when we teach Bible to our children, we should skip that chapter. We don't advise that at all. In fact, we strongly discourage that. Uh, obviously, everything can be taught at the correct level, um, whether it was the, the, that or the rape of Dina towards the end of Genesis, 
All of these, they're, they're challenging, but that's how you begin to open up the relationship, how you begin to explain to your children the things that they need to begin to understand. As we've often said on this program, you cannot start teaching children when they're 15 or 16 or 17. It starts at the very beginning of comprehension. And the Bible is without question the surest way to begin to teach well, if that. I can, if I can come from a different angle, I think, you know, I, you want your children to have music appreciation. And when they're little, they may listen to, I'm probably going to date myself here from when my kids were little, but they might listen to Rafi or Hap Palmer or, or little children's music. But it's very important that they see you listening to Mozart and Beethoven. Now, you're not going to force a three-year-old and say, I want you to sit down and listen to this sonata for the next 15 minutes. But you're teaching them music at that level. It is so important that they see you, though, listening to the 15-minute sonata. Same thing with books. I'm going to read my child, The Cat in the Hat, but I want them to see me sitting with a book that they look at and it has no pictures. And it's huge because I want them to see. So I, I think I would come from a little different angle and say, yeah, you want to start with, with things that the child can relate to, Noah and the flood, but you want to make sure that they don't think that's the Bible and God are for children only. And let you want children, them to see you also let them see learning you. and That's growing. the key thing. Let them see you reading the Bible when you're not teaching them, but when you're teaching yourself. And they're watching you take the lessons of the Bible seriously at your level is what helps you do exactly what you're trying to do here, which is help them begin to take those lessons seriously. It's not enough to just lecture at them. They've got to see that it's as important to you as you want it to become to them as well. Uh, blessings on that. I know it's going to work wonders uh, with, with your children. Go ahead and uh, let us know exactly how that works out. We'd love to hear from you. Until our next time together here on Ask the Rabbi, Susan and I pray that God should bless you with good health and with prosperity, and you yourself will take it from there. Good health and prosperity. That's yeah. right. You know, uh, sisters, today in my, uh, in my meditation of private time, the Lord spoke to my heart about somebody who's watching the program and, if, and it's some, somebody watching that has chronic sickness. You've been sick for a long, long time. In fact, you don't have hope of responding or getting better. And the Lord wants me to share with you that uh, God is a God of the supernatural, that he loves you and he is not limited by medical diagnosis. In fact, that just is a, a, a tease to what God can do because the Lord the Lord has the supernatural power to touch and heal your body and deliver you. Now, here's what I, here's the message the Lord wants you to know. He is your deliverer. Right. He is your savior. He saved your spirit and your soul from eternal separation, but he wants to save your body now, right now. So right now, if, you, if, this, if I'm speaking to you and you feel that in your spirit, right now, I want you to go pick up the, your, your phone and I want you to dial the number that's on the screen. We're going to put our prayer line number up on the screen. And I want you to call right now and say, I've been wrestling and struggling and you've never called before. You've never called us before. And it's okay. It's okay. This is an easy thing for you to do. It's very safe. We don't even need to know, know your name. I'd love to know your name, love to get your address, love to be able to communicate with you through, through the mail and through, through email. But we don't need that to pray for you and pray with you. So if that's you, and so many people, guys, are suffering with this yeah. chronic mm -hmm. and sometimes unknown issues. Right. And, but you know you're sick, but no one else believes you. Mm -hmm. But God knows what you feel like. And he, he stirred my spirit for you today. Yeah. And I want to just say to you, do, do it now. Don't wait. Don't let this moment pass by and then later go, well, gee, I wish I would have. You can any time, but now's the moment. Now, here's where the flowing of the Spirit, the, 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 you got to, Sister Amy, you got to step out when God says go. Right. And healing is rightfully yours as a believer because of the price that Christ paid for you. Mm -hmm. By his stripes, you are healed. So believe it, receive it, mm -hmm. and have it today. The healing power of God is working in your body Amen. Right, right now. now. Amen. Right in now. Jesus' name. And then tell us, tell us what happens. Share with us your testimony of God's faithfulness. Won't you do that? 
That's what we're here for. We want to bring to you the good news of Jesus and have real answers for real life. Well, coming up, we're going to talk about something that's real, and it's, it's what does Jesus, baseball, and Cuba, Cuba, what do they have in common? Our next guest shares how the sport is helping to spread what's going to be, as he shares with me, a great revival across that nation. We'll be right back. Hey, Amy. Hi. It's Woman of Valor time. Yes. And we are doing something really great this year, celebrating women all week long. Plus, we're having a great reveal. We want you to send in your nomination for your very special Woman of Valor. Who is a Woman of Valor? She's a woman of strength. She's brave. She's fearless. She's undaunting. Send in your nomination to ctvn.org backslash valor. And this woman has made an impact in your life, your family lives, community, church. We want to give honor to whom honor is due. So we invite you to put in your nomination, send it to us so that we can celebrate her and women of valor all week long. It'll be a great time celebrating women. Jeff Siegel is the president of Global Baseball and is partnering with Cornerstone Cares to reach Cuba for Christ. Amen. Jeff Tom, welcome to Real Life. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you. Welcome back. Yeah, we're back. We're back too. Well, Jeff, it's good to see you, and Tom, it's good to have you out here on the curvy couch with us. Yeah, nice couch. Is that couch. what you call this, the curvy couch? <laughs> well, I'm couch. taking that from another program, okay. but you know, hey, you know, nothing new under the sun, so yeah, here we are. Okay. Give us an update on what's going on in Cuba with your ministry. Well, it's a real special time in Cuba. Uh, in the year 2001, we entered in uh, through a pastor in Cuba who had a vision to use baseball to connect young people to the local church all over the nation. And when we started with four house churches, now is we're getting ready to enter in with Cornerstone through the sport of baseball and other platforms like humanitarian aid, like construction. There are now 126 house churches. Wow. Pastor Eduardo, who I met at the uh, airport in Atlanta, said baseball is the king of our nation. Will you use the king to introduce our people to the king of kings oh, and lord of lords? That's good. And we've awesome. seen thousands of people saved because baseball and sports right. is like a universal language around the world. Mm -hmm. And this breaks through cultural barriers, language barriers, and brings incredible relationship to share the gospel. Well, how does the baseball work on a mission trip? How, do you, how does that all come together? Well, for example, on our first trip into Cuba, we put a team of 14 ex-professional uh, major league players who were Christian and some college players. And uh, Pastor Eduardo put us in a tournament. But he put an all-star team together from a model communist city oh. called Alamar. In the 90s, when the Soviet bloc fell apart, a crisis hit Cuba, where the people began to realize that our government is not God. They can't provide for us. And a spiritual crisis hit the nation then. So through baseball, uh, they see normal people uh, who love God. Remember, it used to be a, um, a very religious environment, okay. but really without Jesus. Mm. And so there was a disrespect toward Christian religion, but now, especially the men, when they see, wow, these guys are good players. We were actually winning the first game, <laughs> six to four going into the last <laughs> inning until their star player, Raul, came to the plate and the crowd began shouting, Raul, Raul. <laughs> now I brought our number one pitcher who I played on the University of Illinois team, Bob Harold, who had a miraculous conversion his senior year, and then many years later, his daughter Erica became Miss America. Oh, wow. wow. In 2002, Erica Harold. Well, he shared his testimony after our game, a couple days later at the main church, and guess who got saved? Raul, wow. Raul. Oh, wow. Good for, yeah, that's fantastic. That's well, no, who won the game, though? 
they did thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you kind of almost have to add, right? You know, yeah. I mean, you're kind of... We got their attention, though. Marty Clary, who pitched with the Atlanta Braves, yeah. he hit two home runs, and he could still throw in the 90s. Wow. So wow. we had the respect. You brought yeah, some heat. You brought the heat, the, a little heat with heat. you. Now, Tom, t tell us about what, what Cornerstone's doing with, with uh, that, their ministry. Well, you know, Don, we, we take short-term trips with uh, some of our partners that join us, and uh, we were praying about Cuba and about being involved in Cuba, and I was excited to go, but I was like, Lord, don't really have anybody on the ground in Cuba that we that we know, and the Lord dropped this fella, right, <laughs> right, right in our laps here. Uh, and and as I talked to Jeff, I was like, well, this is someone we can partner with, someone who's already uh, earned the respect of the Cuban people, and uh, so we're going to be taking our team in just a little over a month yeah. down there and doing a lot of wonderful things. We'll be doing some evangelism, some house visitation, working with these 120 plus house churches. We're gonna be doing a woman's conference. We're very excited to do that. And also leadership training. There's so many house church leaders that uh, can really benefit by experienced leaders in the body of Christ that can train them. So we're just excited to go. We, had a, we had just had a team meeting two days ago where everybody was getting excited with what we're gonna be doing. Well, awesome. And I, I think it's important that we tell our family that, that the trip's full and that there's no, I mean, we're not opening doors for other people to join us. Well, not right now. I mean, if somebody, boy, it'd be really tough at this yeah. point to get anybody no, in. the trip's yeah. full. Yeah, the trip is full. <laughs> Say that, the trip is oh, full. Much great. And there'll, yeah. be, there'll be another trip Someday, sometime in the near future. Yeah, you know, future. somebody's chasing us down the runway, like, come on, I've got to go to Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> well, but. I'm excited because, you know, Jeff, the, we had planned this earlier, but the Spirit of God checked me. You know how God ever checks you where you're just stop. And he checked me at that point in time. And, and, and so I came to Tom and I said, Tom, we need, to, we need to prayerfully consider stopping the progress on the trip to Cuba. I guess this has been in like last, last fall. Last October maybe, yeah. yeah. And because, I don't know why, I don't know what the, what the check was about, it, but you, you listen to God when he says to, to go, you listen to God when he says to stop. I mean, that's just our, our duties. And so we, we, we did stop and pause, we paused. And now we're back in motion. Mm -hmm. And I believe there's something about the timing in there, Jeff, that I don't understand. I can't tell you what it is, but there's something in the timing that this trip is going to be so much more dynamic and so much more impactful for the ministry than had we gone in the fall of last year. Right. That's God's business. Right. Yeah. God's timing is always perfect. And, mm -hmm. and so we just trust that this is the, this is the open open window for us to go. Well, Jeff, what's your vision for Cuba? God's put you there on purpose. I believe a major revival is coming to Cuba. And because I have not only sports background, God has given me a Franklin Graham-like vision for global baseball. Mm -hmm. See, with Franklin, humanitarian is his way yeah. to earn the respect and earn the right to speak. Mm -hmm. Well, sports is ours. But what I've also done is we now have the components of medical and dental aviation, light construction, humanitarian. Once we are in a country, all different countries have different needs. Cuba's very special. There's much need, much brokenness. But of course, the most important aspect along with those things is training their leaders with theological training. People are getting saved in their homes mm -hmm. and they're willing to dedicate their home to be a house church or Bible study. And they're, very, they're gonna be loyal to the faith but they need to be able to take their people forward. And that's where Cornerstone comes in, that you're bringing people who have this background, who can, we're gonna do four days of leadership training and the movement is through the house churches, a major revival. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we train their leaders to be able to take their own nation forward. That's right. And that's what we're doing. I believe we have three to four years to get their leaders trained. And this revival is gonna sweep the nation on, Lord. through Hallelujah, their people man. And it's going to bleed over into the rest of Latin America and into the Arabic nations because Fidel and one of his best friends, Dr. Rodrigo Alvarez Cambris, who started the revolution in the West, birthed a relationship with all these Arabic nations. But guess what happened to Dr. Cambris? He got saved <laughs> right, in right in front of me. Hallelujah. So what the devil meant for evil, oh, God right. means for good. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Jesus said, take this gospel to all the nations. Now, Cuba's been a special model for me. 
but it's going to break loose all over mm -hmm. Cuba and all over Latin America. Well, that's well, a wonderful vision. Is there needs for training material? Like, do they have Bibles in Spanish? I mean, what kind of things are there that we can do? I know having people there to train, but what about materials? Is there a need for that? I believe special study Bibles, something that's very popular that people are bringing into countries, and you can get them cheap, is to load tablets with biblical materials, Bibles, um, in Spanish. Okay. We can train in English, and they, we have a key interpreter with the church who specialize in teaching English at University of Havana, so she's our interpreter. Okay. So it can be seamless, but if we can get biblical materials, if you can send these tablets, rather than send in all these heavy books, sure. if we can get, if we could, for example, uh, put a hundred of these tablets in place, mm -hmm. we would strengthen a hundred pastors. Amen. Tremendous opportunity That's to exactly. train and to encourage. Well, let's pray. Tom, will you lead us in prayer? F family at home, just stretch out your hand towards Jeff as we pray for the ministry yes. in Cuba. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you that uh, you have opened a door of ministry for us as Cornerstone Cares to you, uh, connect with Global Baseball and with Jeff. Thank you, we thank you for his faithfulness and all that he has accomplished there through your spirit, Lord. And I pray that as we go, an effectual door will be open yes, for God. us to share the love of God with everyone we come in contact with. I pray for people to be saved. Yes, I pray God. for people to be strengthened, Move people Holy to be Spirit. filled with your Holy Spirit, people to be touched in so many ways, yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. I thank you that you're giving us this opportunity, Lord. Let it be a mighty time yes, in God. the Spirit. In Jesus' name, Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We're in with you, Jeff. Thank you. We're believing God for the, for the big finish. Amen. <laughs> for the big finish. Thank Let's go see what Sydney's found in the news. Indiana University of Pennsylvania is expected to make a decision today on a student banned from a Christianity class. Lake Ingle made headlines when he got kicked out of class when he questioned the professor's teaching and said that there are only two genders. The professor showed a TED talk by a transgendered and ex-pastor Paula Stone Williams. The instructor asked the women in the class to share their thoughts. When none of them did, that's when Ingle says he spoke up. Ingle says he needs the class to graduate and his First Amendment rights were violated. An online petition to make a national holiday for Billy Graham has reached 100,000 signatures. It was launched last month on Change.org shortly after Graham's death. The goal for the petition was originally 35,000 signatures, but now it's 150,000. So far, there's no word if any politician has proposed to create a holiday in honor of Graham. Well, that's all for God in the Headlines. Have a great day on Purpose. Now, you guys... I saw a little bit about Women of Valor. I think it's important for us to give a little update. What's going, what's going on? Well, you know, we have um, set aside a week just to celebrate women, but we're gonna highlight that week with our Women of Valor program. And we have been um, asking you to send in your nominations for our Women of Valor that Amy's gonna share. What is a Woman of Valor? A Woman of Valor is a woman of strength. She's fearless, she's strong. This is a woman who has inspired you, who has really lived her faith out through times of difficulty. It could have been a teacher, a mentor, um, a mother, a sister. There are so many relationships. It's so important that we recognize and acknowledge great women of faith. Thank you. And you know, with that, we want to tell you, we've been getting nominations in, but we still have some more time for you to turn in your nomination for that special woman in your life. And Kay Arthur. Uh, that's right. Oh, that's that's right. right. Kay Arthur's going to be here. We're going to have uh, Kay Arthur, probably the premier, one of the premier Bible teachers of, yeah. of our generation is going to be here in the house with us and going to be leading us through that entire week. That's right. Of, uh, for the Women of Valor programming. What a, what a tremendous opportunity for you to Pick somebody that's in your life who's planted seeds of faith and hope and then honor them, mm -hmm. honor them. Yeah. You know, when we come back, we're going to go into coaching. What does it mean to be a champion? Over and over again in scripture, prayer and fasting are seen as keys to unlocking victory in your life. This March, the Cornerstone family is uniting together for 21 days of targeted prayer and fasting until Good Friday. It's not too late to join us. Call today for my free 21-day victory guide with prayer and fasting. 
Follow along with fellow believers all across the country with daily devotions, fasting guides, and tips for praying effectively. Change your life, God's way, as we pray for our families, our nation, and the nation of Israel. Call now to receive this special guide. Welcome to Real Life Coaching, where it's our goal to help you become the very best you that's possible. And then when you're the very best you, you can win in life God's way. That's the only way you really win in life is to do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. Clint Gresham knows what it takes to be a champion. He played for the Super Bowl winning Seattle Seahawks. Today, he begins his session on integrity from his book, Becoming. Welcome to coaching. Clint. So glad to be able to talk with you about uh, in our coaching. We welcome you as a coach. You know what it means to be a champion, at least to play on a championship level in the in the NFL. Uh, what does it take to be a, a champion? You know, I think that the most important thing when it comes to being a champion and having a championship mentality, especially when it comes to our relationship with Christ, is knowing that we already are. Is, is knowing that you are in fact a champion in Christ. When you say, Jesus, I invite you into my life, come and make residence inside of my heart. The Holy Spirit now comes into your life and you've been given a new nature. And so now it's not that we're ever working for something, it's we're working from it. And so I think that identity and knowing who you are is the most important, critical thing that anybody can do in their life with Christ. So when you say know who you are, what you just said changes a lot of people's thinking. Can you expound on that? It's not where you're going, it's where you are? Yeah, yeah, and identity is the number one thing that is important for us, and knowing who you are, not necessarily what you do, and that's uh, you know, so much of what we end up doing is our default identity ends up going to the thing that gives us the greatest sense of significance as opposed to realizing that our identity comes from who God says that we are, not who the people around us say that we are. But we measure ourselves against the people around us. <laughs> That's easier, isn't it? Yeah, you know, we can look out uh, across the landscape and we can find, oh, uh, compared to this person, my integrity is fantastic. Uh, but we forget that that's not the person that we're supposed to be measuring our integrity against. We're supposed to be looking to Christ because he's the one who was the model for us. Well, in all, in all of your studies and all of your pr personal practices, you came up with a four-step process of championship. Can you tell us what those four steps are? Yeah, so I call it the four pillars of wholeness, and they are integrity, bravery, grit, and rest. And if you can implement these things into your life, you will walk in such a level of wholeness, and I define wholeness as giving up hope for a better past, relinquishing control for a perfect future, and choosing joy and courage right where your feet are, right here, right now, today. I'm not worried about yesterday, I'm not worried about tomorrow. All I'm gonna do is focus on right here and right now. And so if you can implement these four things into your life today, you'll find such a greater sense of purpose in your life, such a sense of, of pride in who God has created you to be and, and help you recognize that this is a process though. So we're gonna, we're gonna have focus on each one of those who are coaching sessions and in this session, we're talking about integrity. Now, how do you find integrity? Integrity, you know, that is one of those words that we throw around a lot mm -hmm. and I don't think we really know what it means and it's also one of those things that um, we value it more in other people than we value it in ourselves. 
We expect other people to have integrity, but if we were to ask ourselves, uh, you know, am I an integrous person? We would always say, well, yes, of course, but we really expect that other person to walk with integrity. And so integrity, I have a friend whose mother, she can do the New York Times Sunday morning crossword puzzle in 11 minutes, <laughs> which is baffling to me. I don't think I've ever completed a New York Times Sunday morning crossword puzzle. But one thing that she said about it was that it's actually very simple when you understand the roots of words. And so if you look at the word integrity, this goes back to high school math, mm -hmm. the root of that would be integer, which is a whole number. And so integrity literally means I am walking in a place of wholeness. It means that there isn't duality in my life. I'm not saying one thing and doing another thing. I'm actually coming from one place of values, one set of morals. I'm not talking out of both sides of my mouth. Mm. But the thing about integrity is that um, it is aspirational. It is something that we are striving for. It is something that we are working towards. And how I mentioned earlier that we value it more in other people than we value it in ourselves. And um, the reason that that is, is because it feels good to make an assessment of somebody else's character. Yeah. It really, really does. Uh, gossip is intoxicating. <laughs> sure it is. There's nothing that creates a sense of community quite like we look at somebody that we don't like and we're bonding over that That's right. and we can tear this person down together. Mm -hmm. That creates such a rush and such a connection. Mm -hmm. And so we will judge these other people and we'll tear those other people down and we forget that Jesus always demanded us to have a very uh, intense um, self-character assessment before we started looking at other people. You know, Jesus commanded us, I want you to take the plank out of your own eye before you worry about somebody else. It's, it, easy, it's, easy, it's easy to do that, Clint. I, I think because if we, if we don't look at ourselves, if we look at ourselves too, too hard, then we don't like what we see. Yeah. And we have this protect this pretense that we are higher than we are. That's just man's nature to think more highly of ourselves than we should. But when we look at other people, we judge them. And that's the beauty of the gospel is yeah. to take that judgment away and to be able to say, I'm not who you th think I am. I am only what I am in Christ. That's the, the as I read your, your book and look at your studies, that's really the the process, one of the big processes in the whole concept of becoming, you know, you have to know where you are on the, in the process of becoming. There's got to be a starting place and integrity is a perfect place to start. Yeah. And I think one thing that people don't remember about integrity is that uh, it, it's actually the number one grower of self-esteem. I would say it is the most important element of developing a healthy concept, a healthy self-image, healthy self-esteem. And the reason that self-esteem is especially important in the Christian world is that sometimes I can have such low self-esteem that I won't even let Jesus die on the cross for me. Mm. Mm. Where I, all I see in the mirror is something so bad that I can't even accept his love because I don't feel like I'm worthy of it. Mm. And now we forget that Christ died for sinners. Mm -hmm. Christ died for all of us. Mm -hmm. But if I don't think that I'm worth that, I will subconsciously destroy every good thing in my life. I will never let Jesus come and die on the cross for my sins, and I will constantly be trying to prove myself to God and to the people around me. Mm -hmm. And so it is the number one grower of self-esteem. And so when we are acting out of both sides of morals or we're starting to um, say one thing and do another, that sabotages our self-esteem, that sabotages our sense of worth. And I think anybody, if you were honest with yourself, you could honestly say that you never felt great about yourself when you did something that you knew you shouldn't have done. Right. That's and, right. and you lay there and you're just thinking to yourself, you know, my pride in myself has not gone up because of this. We've all lived with that sense of condemnation and shame. And so when I'm talking about how this destroys our self-esteem, we all can 
resonate with that. Sure, sure. And so that's the reason that integrity is so important because it gets into who we are and it creates shame and condemnation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, on the flip side of this is when we say integrity, we think that that means perfection. And that's not. That's not it at all. Uh, integrity simply means that I am striving for something. It is aspirational. Um, to, to think that I have to have perfection in my life before I'm going to have any type of confidence, well, we're going to be chasing that our entire life because nobody is perfect. Christ was perfect on our behalf. And so the reason that we need to be pursuing Christ and pursuing time in his word is so that he can give us that sense of identity so that we can live from that instead of trying to prove uh, who we are. Don't you think that that's part of the following Christ is to understand how he was a man of integrity and model after him and his words. His words are words of integrity. He tells us to, that our words are important and our thoughts are important and our relationship with God. This is a verse that sticks in my head. You know, Jesus said, I don't say anything unless I first heard the Father say it. Mm. I mean, just think about that. Think about the model that that creates for us. How did Jesus get that download from God in order to be able to say through his mouth those things that God had told him to say? Mm -hmm. that's, that, that's integrity because he wasn't freelancing. <laughs> you know what I mean? He wasn't, he wasn't free forming. That new spoken word stuff is really interesting to me. <laughs> free, the free forming, a free flowing. You just let yeah. things just kind of fly. Jesus wasn't free flowing. He was walking and speaking in the spirit. That type of an, of an example of integrity, being one. You know, I love that. I love that definition of being of integrity, being one, where you say the truth and the truth will set you free. Mm -hmm. You live by it and you die by it. Yeah. The truth has to be the truth. It has to be the truth. And you have to know the truth, which means that it's going to cost you something to get into scripture and to find out what the truth is. If you don't know the truth, the truth will not set you free. That's right. You have to know the truth. So that means that I'm going to have to sacrifice something That's right. to fill my heart with the truth of who God says that I am. Because when I know who God says that I am, and I know that my character and I know that my uh, identity and sense of who I am is in him, well, I can live from that place instead of trying to prove to everybody around me that I'm a good person. Right. Like, I, it's like, no, like Jesus died on the cross for me. I am made in the image of God. My identity is in that I am a son of the king. That's so right. therefore, mm -hmm. I'm going to act like it. That's right. And that's why we feel bad when we do things that go against our nature because we don't have that nature any longer. Mm -hmm. Because the Holy Spirit's inside of us. That's right. He's planted himself inside of us. He's given us that sensitivity to truth and, 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 and his way. Yeah. A lot of people live their life as if they're under the condemnation of sin. I'm talking about Christians. People have asked Jesus to be their savior and they have never discovered that, that truth that you, just, mm. that you just said that the sin has been er er eradicated has been paid for, it's already done. Yeah. They don't have to make penance for it themselves. That's part of that integrity. And I think that also goes back to a little bit of the self-esteem stuff, is that if you don't have self-esteem and you're not willing to let Jesus die on the cross for you, then that means that I'm always gonna be trying to prove myself. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna mean that when I go and love somebody, it's really a codependent type thing where I'm loving this person, but it's really because I'm wanting to get love back. Mm. Mm. So we love because Christ first loved us. Mm -hmm. That's what scripture says. Mm -hmm. So I have to be able to receive the love of God, which takes humility because I don't feel like I'm worth it. But if I can accept that and allow that love to come into my heart, to come into your heart, and I can receive that, well, now I can freely give that to other people. And now I can live a life that is free of bondage, free of condemnation, and free of shame Amen. because he sets us free. Amen. And then we can stand strong and, dare I say, stand tall with our heads lifted up. Not in pride, not in self-pride, but in, in, in being prideful of who God is yeah. and who Jesus is and what he's done for us. Yeah. The gifts he's given us. Boasting in what Christ has done for us. That's exactly right. And I, you know what? I, that's why... Folks, I really uh, recommend to you 
this book becoming because as Clinton has studied and proven himself to be a champion both on the NFL playing field, on the football playing field, and also as he's going forward in his ministry and his life. Because the same principles, and Clint, I'm going to speak to you as this, but the same principles apply. You have to do things right to get things done the way you need to get them done. That's right. So here's a book that are, is a powerful book with you that gives you these steps. They're very practical and they give you the inspiration. Time proven. And they're from the Bible. That's what I love about it too. So the book and a DVD that we've created with Clint that's going to encourage you. Build up your faith. It's because that's the identity of who you are is going to be found in that integrity that we're talking about. The integrity of standing strong in Christ. Knowing that he's already put himself inside of you by the presence of his Holy Spirit. These are the truths that will set you free. So for your gift to this ministry, whatever that gift Whatever you just ask God, say, God, what can I plant? What seed can I plant into the ministry at Cornerstone to help take the good news of Jesus? This same Jesus that we're talking about, how can other people be introduced to him? How can they grow in him? That's what our mission is. Would you help us do that? So we want to help you by giving you this valuable, this valuable resource, the book, the book and the DVD. We'll ship it off to you as soon as possible and you can get it into your life. Maybe you have a young man or a young woman. Now, this isn't for the young. Now, don't, 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 don't disqualify because every one of us, every one of us, no matter how old we are, we need to go forward. We need to become who God has called us to become. You're not done. I don't care if you're 99 years old and you're watching this program. The fact that you're watching tells me that you're not done and God has more for you. He has more for you to become. Clint's going to be with us all through this coaching session. We're going to go through these other, these other truths. I'm glad that you're here. Thank you for having me. Very excited to have you here. Glad you're here too. You want to tune into our next coaching. It's, it's where we learn about the pillar of bravery. So what's bravery? Well, we'll get to talk about bravery when we come back into our next coaching session. You know, when you stop out and you think about it, and you think about what does God have for me? And then you start getting engaged in the Holy Spirit's work in your life. You start allowing your mind to think differently. You start turning off the distractions around you, television and some of the social media stuff. And you put it aside and you just focus on God. Something starts happening inside of us. We start becoming that which we were created to be. God has something special for you. And when you get into that place, lives get touched, changes happen, and testimonies like this happen. Timing. It's one of the most important concepts that God continues to deliver upon for us. I was feeling down and depressed when God's impeccable timing intervened. You see, a few years ago, I received some concerning news from the doctor. One day, I was burdened so much by the devastating news that I had to pull off the road. I couldn't focus, and I was about to lose it. Then, all of a sudden, my phone began to ring. I didn't feel like answering it at first, but something told me I should. It turned out that it was one of the kind and caring prayer partners from Cornerstone. She called me to thank me for sending in my most recent gift and to ask me if I had any prayer requests. Right then and there, I immediately felt God's presence as I prayed with this wonderful prayer warrior. As a result of her praying with me, I received a miraculous healing. Praise God! And thank you, Cornerstone, for your incredibly uplifting prayer ministry. God used your ministry, along with his perfect timing, to heal me and to make my life new again. The Lord revealed to me in preparation for this program in prayer that there was somebody that was going to be watching that has that same story that we just saw, a, a medical condition that's been long-term and it's been uh, chronic and you've not gotten answers or you've not gotten healed. And the Lord wants you to know that there's healing just as in you saw in this, mm -hmm. this testimony. So let faith rise up in you mm -hmm. that what he's done for others, he's gonna do for you too. God's not a respecter of persons. So uh, I wanna encourage you to call 
the number that's on the screen and say, I want, I want, I want you to pray for me. I want to stand mm -hmm. in prayer together for a miraculous touch of the Holy Spirit right now, Amen. right now. And Terry, sometimes we, we say, he'll do it for others, right. but he's not going to do that for me. That's right. And it goes along with what Clint was sharing too, that sometimes we don't have a heart, we don't really grasp the fact that Jesus died for us and that in his death for us, we have redemption and that healing is ours and, the, and all the, the gifts that God has for us is ours in Christ. And we just sometimes have a hard time receiving that, don't we, Amy? Right, well, the word sozo, salvation, mm -hmm. saved, delivered, healed. I mean, it's, it's all inclusive. When you receive Christ, you get the whole package. Uh, Clint made a statement that really applies to healing, I believe. We're not working, we are working from something, not for something. Mm -hmm. So we're not the mm -hmm. sick trying to get healed. We are the healed of the Lord. Come you on. speak it, you declare it, you know it. I'm not mm -hmm. a victim anymore. I'm an overcomer. That's I'm right. not coming right. from some, I'm, it's, it's, it's Christ in me, the hope of glory. Right. It's greater is he that is in me. Mm -hmm. and, and anyone who is born of God overcomes the world. Amen. So we're, we're coming from, from a place, not working for healing. Hallelujah. Healing is ours. Healing is working in us Amen. right now. Hallelujah. Wow, that's that's, a, a, good that's a good word. You know, mm -hmm. the scripture that the Lord gave me just now is in Romans, the uh, ninth, eighth chapter, the 37th verse. And listen to me as I read it to you. Yet in all these things, mm -hmm. we are more than conquerors. conquerors through him that loves yes. us. Mm -hmm. This is as Amy's saying, mm -hmm. already it's done. Right. Mm -hmm. Already it's done. That's the message of becoming. Yeah. Isn't that you have a work that you have to do, but God's work is complete. So mm -hmm. your work that you have to do is to identify who you are and then to hold on to that with faith and trust and hope and to encourage yourself with those words and to turn off all the negative talk, all that yeah. self-talk that says, oh, that's not me. Oh, that's me, but you don't know me. I'm, and all those things that's going on right now in your head, mm -hmm. that's not from the Lord. That's not God. That's not, that's the enemy trying to steal from you. So that's why we want to pr pr provide to you these types of informations and these, two, these kinds of tools. This book is a tremendous encouragement written by a young man who's been there and, and played in played in the big NFL game and saw life come out alive. And so his testimony and is true. And then the DVD, that's an hour worth. I want to give both of these to you as our gift to you as you plant a seed into the ministry here at Cornerstone. Your best gift, we'll give you this as our, as our thank you. And it's going to be a tool to take you forward in your, in, in your walk in right. faith that not what what will happen, but what has already happened, as, right. as Sister Amy just tell, told us, mm -hmm. it's what all has already happened, mm -hmm. our identity. When he said, it is finished, he broke the curse of poverty and lack and sickness and disease over our lives. And he gave us a brand, like, like Clint said, we have a new nature. We have a new identity. We now identify with Christ and in his sufferings. It's not I that live, but it's Christ that lives in me. It makes me really excited mm -hmm. because I wonder how many people get up every day and all they hear is you're not enough. You're not worthy. Mm -hmm. You'll never make it. Mm -hmm. You'll never do anything good. That door won't open for you. You'll always mm -hmm. struggle financially. You'll always deal with this disease. You'll always have this heartache. And it's like, it's the opposite of the gospel. That's, right. That's the enemy coming to steal your identity. You're a champion of Christ. That's right. mm -hmm. His very divine spirit lives in you and will infuse you with his divine power. Amen. And that, that goes along with what he was even sharing about being whole in Christ. Right. I liked, I didn't realize that integer, how do you say that? An integer. Did I say the integer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It really is the root for, I mean, is an, for integrity. integrity yeah. You know, and I thought, you know, I didn't realize that, but that's what Christ represents Whole. is wholeness right. in him. That's right. right. You know, we are one in mm -hmm. Christ through Christ yes. and then for Christ. And we don't really need to have anxiety, but a lot of us do because yeah. we're always trying to do the perfection route, trying mm -hmm. to do and not trying to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have been completed. Now, mm -hmm. brothers and sisters, it's the issue of how we view ourselves. This whole concept of identification, that's in, in the news all over the place, we identify. 
and I, I'm not going to get into that at this point in time, but it is true what we think, as a man so thinks, so, as a man thinketh, so is he, the mm -hmm. scripture says. And so mm -hmm. how do you see yourself? And I want, I want to tell you, just as Amy and Terry have said, you are a champion. Yes. That's right. You are a champion in Christ. And we just read out of Romans, you're more than a conqueror. conqueror. And, I, and you said, Don, you don't know my circumstances. You don't know how bad things are. You don't know where I'm coming from and how much I've blown it and all the mess that I've done. Well, I don't need to know all of that because all of that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's all, it doesn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. What matters is what you do from here on. Yes. That's what matters. And who are you? If you're saved, if you're a born again child of God, you are a child of the King. You are yes. implanted, embedded into your DNA now as the Holy Spirit. He infuses you from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. He is inside of you. Greatness is inside of you. And so I encourage you, get this book, Becoming, and the DVD, and start changing the way you think about yourself. Who are you in Christ? You are all that God, who's God? Amy, who is God and who's the Holy Spirit? And if the Holy Spirit's in you, what's missing? Everything. <laughs> I mean, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you, oh you, man, how do you do life? But here, if you're struggling with who you are and your identity and your worth and you don't feel like a champion, this is when you want to tune in every day and hear the message. Listen to Don and Terry tell you what a champion in Christ you are and what an overcomer you are. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So build up yourself Amen. on your most holy faith mm -hmm. and get the Word into you. This message of becoming, it's a process. Becoming yes, more like Christ, <laughs> becoming a fully devoted, nobody has arrived. We're all on a journey. Amen. Well, the way mm -hmm. to capsulize at least today's part of the coaching is this. It's not where you're going, it's where you're coming from. Yeah. So you see who you are now, not who you're going to be now, because you got to see it in the spirit world. Who you are now is invisible. You're seated in the heavenlies. The Bible says this about you. If you're, if you're born again, you're seated in the heavenlies with Christ. So say in the spirit world, you're already there. It's in the natural world that we're struggling. It's all in the battle in the mind. So we stand with you. We, we want you to join us every day as we pray and, and, and look at God's word and hear his spirit. And we pray for you. We're glad you, you've called in your prayer request. Feel, feel free to do that at all times, 24-7. We're here to pray with you. So let's, let's, let's pray now for these folks. Lord, yes. I thank you, God, that you are true. Thank you. Father, I thank you that your fruit and gifts of your spirit are for today. And Lord, I thank you for every one of these people who've called in. Every need that is reflected on these pieces of yellow paper are people's lives, Father, that you care desperately about, God. These aren't just pieces of paper. These are real people, Father. And Lord, I thank you for the love of your spirit and the compassion of your heart that flows out right now and meets all of these needs according to your riches and glory. In Christ Jesus, God, we thank you, Father, that we can trust you. Lord, we give our lives to you fresh and new today. Let this week be a week of great expectation, God. Yes. As we go out with our yes. eyes wide open, Lord, we watch for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So glad you joined us. We'll see you on tomorrow's Real Life. Every day's new, every day's fresh. Stone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.